here. And he looks ugly. We got... Okay, so let's see what's going on here. We have an, a lower bound and an upper bound happening. So first, I'm just going to kind of ignore these guys, right? I'm focusing on this right here. Um, we have a fraction. If I'm, you know, in my head, I'm thinking like, if I write this as a non-fraction, it's not going to make my life any easier. So what is going to be the U? This is a really hard one to choose. What is going to be the U? Is the U going to be 1 over X? I don't know. Is the U going to be the cosine? Um, let's just do cosine X. Or is the U going to be the 1 over X squared? Uh, what else can a U be for this one? Oh, I guess U could be cosine of 1 over X. Oh, man, this is disgusting. Well, for sure, this one's out. Um, it's definitely not that guy because when I do the derivative of that, uh, the du over dx would equal, um, <clears throat> what would that be? Uh, it would be negative sine x, which I don't see anywhere. I don't see a negative sign anywhere on there, so it's definitely the, not that one. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Is it going to be, I, I'm really feeling this guy or this guy. I don't know which one it is going to be, though. Or maybe it's just the x squared. Ooh, dang. Maybe it's just x squared. Whew. There's so many options. Let's see what this one would be. du over dx, what would that equal? That would equal 2x. I don't see a 2x dx anywhere up there. So I'm guessing this one's out. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. Well, let's do, um, let's do this guy. Uh, Let's do the, the first one, all right? Now, for the first one, u would equal x to the negative 1. Uh, if I take the derivative of that, that would be du over dx equals negative 1 x raised to the negative 2 power, which actually um, is the same as, let's see, du over dx, whoops, du over dx uh, equals negative 1 over x squared. Ooh! I like that. I like this 1 over x squared because I see that right here. You see this 1 over x squared? I like that a lot. So all these guys, they're out. It's definitely none of those guys. So let me, let me erase those guys really fast. We don't need you guys. Nobody likes you. Go away, use. I'm just, I did all the extra stuff, guys, because sometimes selecting a U is not a really easy, obvious thing. You're going to have to try a couple of different ideas there. So we have... Um, the u equals that. The du, let's see, let's write the du. du would equal negative 1 over x squared. Booyah. So I got my two um, expressions here that I'm going to sub into um, this so that it makes it easier. So we have the integral of uh, cosine u. Um, and then now... I'll, I'll, I'll sub it in like one at a time, okay, so you guys can see it. Okay, so I see that, um, th so this is out. We just have the U in there, so I sub this guy in. Now let's sub the DU in. How can I get rid of the DX? Now, I see it. Let's see, I'm going to rewrite some more for you guys, so you, hopefully you guys can see it. I have an X squared DX. There you go. There's my 1 over X squared DX, but this one's negative. Ah, so, hmm. I, I need it to be a positive like this one down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by a negative 1. So actually, I'll be subbing in a negative du. So see, now these are exactly the same. Yay. I'm kind of excited about that. So I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to put a negative du in there. Now, that's kind of the same as like a negative 1 multiplying the du. So I'm going to take that negative out. So cosine u and then du. Hey, that looks way better. All right, I did all that work with the u sub to make this pretty looking integral. Actually, this integral sign is not that pretty. I need to practice that. But anyways, that's that's a nice looking one. So I have a negative 1 waiting to multiply to the antiderivative of cosine u, which is sine u. And then I have my plus. No, actually, it's not a plus c. I'm going to put a line right there. And I'm supposed to put my lower my upper bound on that. Okay, but but I can't because these are x's. Those are x values for the the dx um, integral up there. So, hmm, what can I do? Oh, I know what I can do. I can take this u out and I can sub this guy back in. Hey, and then I could use those numbers, or I can do it the other way, which is the way I actually would rather. Would I rather do? Is I rather change these x's into y values, or I'm sorry, not y values, into u values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what u equals, 
and I'm going to plug them in. Okay, now I actually wouldn't write this out because it looks kind of obvious, but I'm writing it out just for you guys. So what would you be when x is 2 over 3 pi? It would be um, the reciprocal. Why? Because it says 1 divided by 2 over 3 pi, which is the same as saying 1 times the reciprocal, which would be 3 pi over 2. So this is 3 pi over 2. And this one down here would be pi over 6 because you just get the reciprocal. So now using the fundamental theorem of calculus, let's, 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 I'm going to plug in the numer or the, the upper bound first. So it's 3 pi over 2. And then I'm going to subtract negative sign. And I plug in the lower bound, which would be pi over 6. All right, back to calculus. Let's remember our unit circle, shall we? We shall. Now this says 3 pi over 2. So uh, I know that this right here is pi over 2. And that would be 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. So this point right here, what is the y value there? We know it's negative 1. So this is negative 1. So we have a negative, negative 1. Yay. Minus um, negative. What do we get at pi over 6? Pi over 6, if you remember, was right there. The y value there is 1 half. And so we have 1 half. And uh, this becomes positive, this becomes positive, so our answer is 1 and 1 half, or you can write it as a improper fraction, which is 3 over 2. That is our answer. Are you guys all with me? Was that gnarly or what? Now, I'm going to do a little bit of extra learning here, just because we can. Um, now, I want to graph this. So, let me, let me graph that really fast. Let's see. Do I have... Um, my Desmos right here. There he is. Oh, look, I already got it out there. Here, let me, let me like just show you guys. So here is the function. Man, he looks ugly. Look at that. Now let's put in our lower bound and our upper bound. Our lower bound uh, was, I think it was pi over six. Or what? No, let's see. It was, um, yeah, six over pi. Okay. So let's say x equals six divided by pi. So you see our x value is right here. Okay, um, and then our other one is, I think it was 2 divided by 3 pi. Yeah, 2 divided by 3 pi. So I'm going to say x equals 2 divided by 3 pi. Booyah. Okay, so you see the beginning and the, the lower bound and the upper bound right there. Let me go ahead and take a picture of this so I can throw it into our, our document. Uh, let me shorten this up. Let's see, come on. Uh, let's go a little faster here. We are going to go like this, and booyah. All right, so what did we actually find? You guys know that the integral is finding the area under the curve. So what did we just do here? Um, let's plug this in right here, boom. Okay, um, actually, let's go down here where there's more space. Okay, so what we just did is we found the area of this guy plus this guy. So you have the area under the curve and area over the curve. Now you guys know that the area above the curve, that's, that's usually a positive area. And the area under the curve, or I'm sorry, under the x-axis under the curve, between the curve and the x-axis, that would be a negative area. Okay, now just looking at a picture, which one looks bigger, the negative area or the positive area? I'm kind of doing a trick here, okay? So now if you said that the negative area was the bigger one, you're right. You're definitely right. There's definitely more area right here than this tiny little space right here. So why is our answer positive 33 over 2? How do we get that? Well, I don't know if you guys caught this, but this x value is 6 divided by pi. This x value is 2 divided by 3 pi. Oh, but look, we start at 6 over pi in our integral, so we're actually going backwards. And so if we go backwards with our integral, this is not a positive area, that's a negative area. And this is not a negative area, that's a positive area. When you go backwards, the signs flip. So that's why we have a positive answer three over two because the positive area is bigger when you go backwards okay